Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for March, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. We have five topics today, so let's dig in right away. Let's start with two updates for developers using Data Connect. Update number one is for the web developers that are using React and Angular. Data Connect can now generate SDKs for these popular web frameworks. To get started with React, for example, install the TanStack Query Firebase library, enable React in your connector.yaml file, and you should now be able to use these React hooks in your code. Want to learn more? Check out the link in the description. Now over to the second update. Data Connect has introduced a new at check directive for defining authorization rules with cell expressions. This allows you to restrict queries based on roles or other conditions. Learn more in the Data Connect documentation linked below. A few months ago, we announced that you can now use Firebase Remote Config on the server side through the admin SDK for Node.js. That's a feature that empowers you to dynamically manage the behavior and configuration of server side applications. With the release of version 6.7.0 of the Firebase Admin SDK for Python, you can now also use this feature in, as you may have guessed, apps built with Python. To learn more about all of the use cases and how to get started, check out the remote config server side documentation linked in the description. Cloud Functions for Firebase now allows you to stream the responses of your callable functions. This means that your cloud function can send data to the client in chunks as it becomes available. The client can then process and display this data incrementally, creating a much more responsive and engaging user experience. Stay tuned to the next Firebase Release Notes deep dive as we'll cover this feature more in depth. Starting in version 6.3.0 of the Node.js Functions SDK, there's also a new on-call GenKit trigger, which allows you to deploy GenKit flows as a callable function. Read more about this trigger in this blog post, which I'll link below. Speaking of GenKit, the latest release of this framework introduces exciting new features. Version 1.2.0 introduced support for YouTube URLs in the Google AI and Vertex AI plugins. This means you can now pass YouTube videos as part of your prompt when you're using the Gemini models. And version 1.3.0 introduces support for native image generation in the Google AI plugin, so that you can take advantage of Gemini's ability to output text and inline images with the 2.0 Flash experimental model. Firebase App Hosting also released some exciting updates. There's a new instant rollback feature which lets you restore a previous version of your app without rebuilding. This means that when you click on the rollback to this build button in the Firebase console, rather than creating a new build from an old commit, app hosting simply takes the old container image and makes it live again. We've also made it easier for you to initialize the Firebase SDKs when using app hosting. Simply call initialize app with no arguments and we'll automatically configure Firebase for you. And last but not least, we are rolling out support for connecting your app hosting backend to a VPC network. There are two ways to do this, direct VPC aggress or serverless connectors. Both of them can be configured through VPC access in your apphosting.yaml file. Learn more about all of these features in this blog post, which is also linked in the description. Those are all the updates we have for today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Rosario and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.